Eleven. Long version. Um, I'm going to put the kettle on. <coughs> Goodbye, my love. Well, it's time to go. I don't know why that song popped in my head. Why would I be saying goodbye? When I don't really think I'm going anywhere Except up, baby, up, up, up Yeah You gotta get up <coughs> You gotta get up <coughs> Six thing Ow Do that thing Do that thing Do that thing Do that thing do that thing, do that thing, do that thing. I want honey, 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 I want honey. Do that thing. Pow. If that gets copyright, that'd be weird. Right. Seems my most popular subject person is AJ Miller. Might as well do a quick AJ Miller update. Oh, nothing. Um, they must be having the rest. And he's right, you know, people have got to get on with doing their own stuff. And a few of his, uh, you know, favourites have been doing some videos. So I'm sure he didn't ask ask anyone to do it, but he probably wanted them to do it. More people are feeling. I can feel it, and it's good, and it's good, even if it does catch you out being naughty. It's good. The moon at the moment, the date is today, the date? 16th of July 2017 and the moon is at the point where men are at the bottom, just this is like, so we're just, so tomorrow morning should wake up feeling starting to get better again and the women will have the opposite feeling but at the moment they're up in the clouds. You know, got to raise the vibrations. Yeah. Hmm. Good, 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 good vibrations. And they're such good singers. Good, 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 good vibrations. Ooh, ooh. She's giving me the good vibrations. She's giving me the good citations. Good, 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 good vibrations. If I get a copyright on that, <laughs> what? what? Like, man! You can't... <coughs> it's probably... <coughs> it's probably more guitar chords. No, I don't know how they do it. Like, you know, I sing a song on my guitar, and if it's pretty okay, I get a copyright. And it puts an ad on my video. And I don't put ads on my videos because not enough people watch them. So, 
Um, go figure. Someone's making money out of me singing their song. I mean, they must be making two pence. I think my audience figures would be higher. <laughs> Such thrilling videos. It's like suffering. <laughs> I'm making you suffer. I'm making you suffer my appearance in your face and my voice in your head. But, yeah. You know, gotta keep, keep going. Keep the good fight fighting because we are so nearly there oh. come on yeah come on come on come on yeah yeah <laughs> My kettle takes a long time to boil. Um, I hope everybody's nice and calm. Anyone who watches this long must be calm and patient. Or oh, you have this slight hope that I might say something interesting. Sometimes I do. And I too hope that I might say something slightly interesting. And there's so much going on at the moment. It's, it's brilliant. It's crazy but brilliant. And, you know, the emotion... Emotion is coming up. Emotion is like... The, the in thing now. Like you can... It's so... What's that word that person used once? Empowering. Because... It's just like... When you're in an emotion... It's like nothing... It's more important than anything else. It's eternally important. And you know that. <coughs> like me with my soul repairing. I, you know, the big ones, the big ones came up first. Like the first one, the first one or two that you deal with. I mean, each one would be different. One might just be a fear barrier towards it. So it might not be that big. Some you know you hit into some of these emotions, and they're big, and they have a big effect on you afterwards. You know, and it's a, and it's an eternal effect. So, so where you know I I I still find things, but they they are like rarer things and a bit more obscure, and you know there's stuff coming up with me being Enoch. I've had emotions. I haven't had a like full visual living memory. Because um, I think things are so different then. Like, so straight away my intellect kicks in and there's so much unknown. So, you know, that, that that's why I can't connect with it. I think if you know, hearing some, you know, stuff, you know, the Book of Enoch and stuff like that. Some of it has, you know, triggered a feeling or something. But uh, no full, full memory yet. But, but stuff, it's good. But I can see if, like, if 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 it had been like uh, A.J. Miller, and it had been two thousand years ago, when we've got quite a lot of history 
from that period, we have, we have understandings of what it was like to live then. There's a lot more information. So if I had had that, then it would probably be more possible to get proper memories. And anyway, I don't... It's not necessarily what I need. See, and th with the progression, it's pointless trying to decide, oh, I'm going to focus on that area. It, it's, it's pointless. Because quite often what comes up surprises you. You never would have thought of it. Yet it comes up. The stuff comes up, you can deny it, and that's the worst thing to do. Because if it's what you need to deal with next, you're not going to get anything else until you deal with that. If you're scared of it, then that's no good because that's putting you in the wrong vibration. More trusting God. You feel in the truth. You can feel the truth. This is the the fact that's being confirmed here, there, and everywhere. Well, I always felt you could, and AJ Miller confirmed it for me. It's true. You can feel the truth. And what you do with that is up to you. But knowing that helps. So saying God is an all-loving, all-feeling being. That is our creator. Is our mummy and daddy. And feeling that truth is a good feeling. But yes, I blurt it out now and it means kind of nothing. But when you're there in the moment really thinking about what life is and what we are and all that sort of stuff and you're on your own, it's a bit you know, spooky, because uh, cause your energies are up, and, and whatever happens, and remind yourself of that, because it's true, so it will hold you in good stead. And you know God. God knows you. From your, the first point you became aware, you were there with God. And you and then you had this physical body which was dividing and dividing, but you had consciousness, you had awareness. Mummy noticed you, your physical mummy noticed you, because a lot of people if they're open, they um they can feel it. About that, I've noticed for a while that a lot of black people can feel it. And a lot of women can feel it. And there are more men, normal men who previously weren't feeling it, are feeling it. And quite often, I won't generalize anymore. But yeah, I've lost what I was on now, it's typical. Feeling it, truth, feeling the truth. So it's all going to be about feeling. But your first feelings are going to kind of be repairs. It's about accepting that since you were born, since that first awareness moment that you had, before you were born even, you were with God. And when I say with God, you had a... You know, you had... I say pictures, but... See, what I remember is when I first went back into these sort of memories, it was like red and white checkered, but spongy. Red and black, 
sorry, red and black, kind of spongy. And there's mummies here and daddies here, and they're like you, you know, they're like there. So there's no escaping what was there. And you play games with mum and dad. God, games like drawing, drawing pictures, and a, you know, and a, and a picture can be done. What does God look like? That's a game. That's a game is to make a picture of God, mum and dad. Because in a sense, this whole physical reality, this whole picture, shape, form, is, well, I guess it must be on the soul level somehow. I mean, it's deep. But, you know, I'm telling you now the pictures I remembered when I was going through this in late 2014. Fourteen or fifteen? Yeah, fourteen. Yeah. And it was enough to realise that once I was born, and obviously I must have had an awareness of my mum being in her at some point. I don't remember going and having that awareness that suddenly is like this. But when you're born, you must then look at your physical mum and dad and link them to the the mum and dad in your feelings. And that's when things go awry because, you know, suddenly you're being shouted at or something and that's not what real God would have done. So, the, now you're like, feel like, oh my, <laughs> what happened, you know? You're losing God. So when you come to this realisation that you've, in your life, however old you are now, your, your progress, in a sense, has been, has been, you know, not towards God perhaps, or perhaps you have turned already, but um, other people who have not, and when that realisation comes. And it's like... You know, there are the facades. You could think of it like an eggshell. It was for protection in the first place. But you need to break out of it. And when I, I was, you know, filmed on YouTube uh, September around that 2014, I was doing videos of me processing facade. That's what it was. <coughs> I had a spliff for two weeks. I had a spliff. Sat down, meditated. Strong. My face started contorting on its own. And while that was happening, the, what the face, sh the shape of the face was making was like, one was this arrogance, and I knew, you know, what it was about, and, you know, it was about thinking different races are lower than my race, you know, there were, there were different things like that, and, and it was unpleasant, but it was bearable, but what was nice was thinking, this is actually doing me good, and afterwards I'll be better off, eternally better off. So that comes first. You shake off these defences you've created because all you, the heart of your soul is sensitive. When you haven't felt your heart, and most people haven't, took me all of that and more, quite a lot more, you can see the series of my videos to get into my heart to get into that to be sensitive enough for my heart to go well yeah I'll I'll open up if you like you know like, be gentle be gentle with yourself God is these things be more like God 
figure out what God is, and be more like God. Pretty simple. And it will happen anyway. God has designed it so. This video may or may not be a part of it. AJ Miller's work may or may not be a part of it. Other things, whatever <laughs> God's plan is. Whew. Amazing. <sighs> Here's to God for doing it for us, for making us. And we need each other too. Um, it wouldn't be much fun without other people. Other people are our own, you know, you know, in our situation as we are. If God had only had one son and daughter, you know, and left it at that, um, well, you know, it's, but um, we do need each other. And there'll be people who just keep cropping into your life and and uh, people close to you, whatever, soulmate, I mean you need that soulmate, you want that companion for an eternal life, an eternal existence, on your own, uh, you know, I'm talking eternal, after a million years, on your own, I don't think anyone can bear that, we have a companion, the solar system, higher soul, solar system right that's my analogy for the soul is the solar system two suns together pointless where's the life one sun on its own where's the life sorry that was going to another analogy about the gay souls that don't exist by the way um soul solar system sun male nothing without all the planets and objects nothing to show what its light is reflected upon and warmth is radiated upon planets on their own without a sun would be nothing either constantly in the dark cold so both are needed both are needed And that is you and your other half, male and a female, as one, one, to, you, we are one consciousness on that soul level. The male is an expression, the female is an expression, one soul. And knowing this makes a difference. To how you feel and it makes a difference to your relationship with God too. And peeling soap residue on my hands. Poor, I haven't even made a fag stroke spliff. Um yeah I'm still smoking tobacco. When I went through this little hard time lately, I had, because uh, my face thing came back. And I was saying before to my son, and I was going, it's not like my face thing um, with my leg. I said, it's different. I said, fags don't seem to affect it. <laughs> and then as soon as my legs started getting better and I could walk around again, and then this face thing hits me again, my wisdom tooth, and so I right cut down the fags, one every two hours, it, that's it. And it, you know, it was obviously still coming and stopped smoking, but then I was doing, I was getting to like four hours. Four hours, like, that's like three a day, that's fuck all right. <laughs> but it was coming on and even thought, oh, fuck it, I'm going to have a fag. And I saw this vision flash up in front of me. Or was that before I said, fuck it, I'm going to have a fag. Anyway, around it. And it was like Michael and his angels. But it was Michael because it was Michael Knight out of the Knight Rider. That was his face. But that was Michael in my, you know, that was there to say for me, Michael. 
and I got this kind of feeling these days that certainly the four main angels are aspects of God and maybe all angels are aspects of God and something I'm not sure, sure about yet but anyway so yeah I don't know quite how it was relevant but it did feel like it did feel encouraging and at that point I I had popped it and I think at that point I popped it a second time because the first pop didn't seem to be working. So I say popped it, I'd stabbed it and it didn't pop. It took uh, 18 hours, right? From the second time I stabbed it, 18 hours. But I knew the second, as soon as the second time I stabbed it, and I think I had a fag. <laughs> Fuck it. And I felt a lot better. I felt a lot better. So, I don't know. You know, when I die, I'm not going to be able to smoke fags. But I don't fancy going over to these uh, synthetic nicotine things. Especially that was something else I said when I was 19 as well. I did this little sketch, and that's in the blue book, about people only allowed to smoke government fags, but I got hold of these other ones. And, you know, how I smoke... Um, I have to get Pueblo or American Spirit Tobacco. They're the only two I can tolerate. And so they they've got no preservatives in. They've got you know nothing to to stop them rotting. Because that's the thing. If uh, tobacco is too wet, it will rot. So most tobacco has got preservatives in it, and then a bit of perfume maybe, you know make it different from the others but so these two tobaccos aren't like that they are dry drier but the tobacconist he gave me a gave me a wet stone so if it's too dry I'll just soak the wet stone well, pop it under my rainwater tap and then stick it in the tobacco for a few hours or whatever or a night so I'm be farmer, and then in the morning, in the morning, and it's all it's all it's all down. <laughs> I don't know what that accent that says, but uh, my Norwegian granddaddy said, "Oh, we used to use potato peelings. He'd stick a couple of them in with his backy, and that would make it nice and moist." But to be honest, I don't like it too moist either. I like it a bit dry. <laughs> I like it with cannabis in. Legalised cannabis should be legal anyway. Mhm, mm mhm, mm mhm. Mm uh, yeah. So we are. I think you know the feeling. The feeling on the on the soul is things are getting good. <laughs> Despite what happens physically on a thing like. You know, this thing like Grenfell Tower, it's awful. And people have died, and people have lost their family, which is hard. But the truth is, they're not dead. And that certainly seems to be coming out slowly, gradually, is this fact that the, you know, when you die, you keep existing. And everyone who's ever lived is continuing to exist in, a, in some sort of way. And the reincarnation is, you know, reincarnation is widely believed. i got to admit that, you know, I pretty much... You know, A.J. Miller was the first one I ever heard saying, you know... It was just the first man and woman. I mean, I I had believed in evolution. I thought that was truth, that humans had come about. But I just figured it was God's plan. But to think about, you know, you've got Chinese over there, and, you know, it just made more sense. Um, when I think... 
So anyway, so he was the one who certainly opened it up to me. And I think, you know, the origin of humanity is a massive mystery. That That is fascinating and um, wants to be uncovered. And <laughs> I actually tried to start writing a book, you know, what it all about it. But um, I don't think I'm going to manage. It becomes so, you know, so you've got Adam and Eve. They lived for a thousand years and God knows what powers they had and what knowledge they had, what they were capable of and that all the things they could have done in that thousand years. And then you've got the next generation. Um, you know, and once you're into a few generations, you've got a few hundred people, about very capable and knowledgeable, long lives, doing probably extraordinary things. Now, all these extraordinary things that they would have done would, of course, affected all the subsequent generations. Big time. So, you know, why is there a big, massive population in China who are genetically all quite similar? Am I making a generalisation there? They've all got black hair. They've all got low, flat sort of nose bridge. They've all got brown eyes. <coughs> They've all got similar skin complexion. They all have a, a kind of similar eye setting. There are people who say they're slightly, um, slightly dance, but well, people with downs are more loving, aren't they? You know, maybe they are quite different. I don't know. Any, you know. When you say no, you know, you know someone like from school. You know them. You know when someone was a kid. You know them better. Because when you're a kid, you're more open, you're more. Yeah, less egos, less facades. So you got to know the real person. We've built up all these defences. All these eggshells we need to crack. Well, I say I've cracked them, but maybe I haven't cracked all of them. Oh, I must have done. I must have I like having something to do with my fingers. That's probably <laughs> that's probably this probably my one of my egos. Tobacco does something. It deprives tobacco deprives me of something. It deprives me of a, a feeling connection to all the other souls. But it doesn't stop God. I can still feel God. I don't know. It does seem to do something like that. Is it a tool to be used? Because it seems to go so well with cannabis. Just, mmm, lovely. I mean, Ayanuska, when people do Ayanuska, That's two things, too. There was a period where I just had cannabis and I didn't have any tobacco. 
I was having a lot more vision and stuff, but I had no control of it. It was just like, boom, 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 boom. It was like, man. <laughs> so, yeah, who knows? Maybe this, the combination is needed. Don't know. I mean, Yeshua, I bet he was, I bet he did some incense. You know what I've been thinking lately? If I was rich, I'd be, I'd be scared. There's a lot to worry about. I was hearing about this bloke uh, on the news, Goldstone or something. Hearing about his career, how he. Started as a poor Jew in Manchester or something, but Birmingham maybe. Wanted to be a journalist, but was told he wasn't very good, and but he gradually worked his way up in journalism, and then, anyways, then he became some like fucking I don't know, PR enemy or something. He was you know, getting there and making it good and got involved with Donald Trump and and this Russian uh, pop star or something and this Russian billionaire who wanted a Miss Universe who was Donald Trump's you know and then and then the comment was and afterwards you know he would stay in this guy would go to Russia and stay in plush places he'd go to New York and stay in a Trump Tower you know and you can think how so I'm thinking, yeah, I'm so successful, I'm going and I'm staying in this hotel. But I just felt unhappiness in that. I really did. You know, and then now they're going to get him by the short and curlies or whatever. But, you know, that's what I mean. There's all this, there's all this battling up there. Everyone wants to get on top of the hill, and they're all the sort of people who who have stabbed their mates in the back before, and so they'll do it again to get what they want. I actually, I really pity those people right now because the tide is gonna turn very soon. It's the Jewish year, 5778 coming up. We've had, we're in 5777777. And I thought it was 5776 that was in the divine number code. But when I did it with the full digits, because in there's 1.618. Double O, three nine, blah, blah. and I thought that double O, you know, just keep it simple. Blah, blah. And my brother said, like, just put it into Excel, and then you can do the full number, and then you can see. And with the more accurate number, it's even better. The code is even better. Hits whole numbers much more accurately everywhere, and <clears throat> it's five seven seven eight. So. September some point, I think, Jewish New Year. Because I was, I was making a big thing about that. <laughs> it's got to be this year because it's 5776 and do 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 and everything's coming in. But so, yeah, 5778 coming up soon. And I don't know why, but March 1st I had this shit sort of start on my leg and stuff. And there's that thing, isn't there, about the torment for five months. 
And I've heard there's been quite a lot of other people who've had like injuries similar. I've heard of broken ankles and bad legs and oh yeah, it's been yeah for some reason, yeah. Hearing, hearing it's been coming up, so you know by the end of July that will be five months. March, April, May, June, July. Five months. And like, yeah, right, in the moon thing, you know, coming up now, be waking up every morning feeling a little bit better. And you'll notice, you'll start, you start noticing if you follow it. Yeah, because I haven't been doing that for a full year yet. I thought at one point there was a... <laughs> A leveling off, but I just wasn't noticing so much that I was getting higher and higher. Sorry, <laughs> you might see me just move my willy then. Apologise, please don't ban the video. I'm not like, yeah. Yeah, gosh. What do you think of the kids these days? What are they into? <laughs> Apps, <laughs> games, <laughs> into the old. Dun, 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 dun. But I think they're, they will notice the difference between people and AI. Like my son, we've been playing um, uh, Call of Duty, yeah. And um, I could only play it initially. I could only do five. And I was like, Francis, sorry, I can't play this anymore. It's like doom and nut. But kind of getting a bit more used to it, and I can do it, and so I'm killing animated objects, whatever. And then uh, it's quite fun. I think I think actually, I think it probably does help take some of the frustration out of people, and it's you know certainly better than being violent towards a real person. Anyway, so he goes online, and you're playing it online, and like, they're really good. I mean, these people are bloody brilliant. They must be played, playing it for hours and hours, like professionals. But <laughs> then suddenly it's like, you know, he goes to sit next to someone, and the, and the guy sort of turns his gun and aims at France, and then shoots it to one side, and then shoots to the other side. And Francis is like thinking, what's he doing? Like... Because the first time Francis went on it, he just like killed his own mate. So you, then you realise, shit, you can actually kill your own people, which is more realistic. And to be honest, playing that game before, like when it's just me and him and with computer players, you can't kill your own people. So, and which is a good job because <laughs> I would have done most of the time. And um, anyway, so obviously, you know, you... So I was saying to Francis, don't shoot him, don't shoot him, because I thought Francis might shoot him. And we, Francis did him. And then, and then suddenly the bloke is doing so, he's trying to get underneath France, trying to get on top of him, and then he suddenly starts jumping up and down. It was funny. You know, so it was like, there's contact there. And kids are going to notice that that is people contact. Which you never get. You you're not gonna get that from AI. All you're gonna get from AI is enjoying what the person who wrote it, made it, whatever people have put into it themselves, and the technology that exists that enables you to do. <laughs> um, 
today for the last time I'm gonna say to you what are you doing still watching this video <laughs> or have you just skipped along I doubt it if you're still watching what's it like to be you So, Garden of Eden, different way of living. I um, I know that uh, nature is cooperating and if you leave nature to be in your garden, it decides to grow what it wants, what it needs. And yes, you'll probably notice that a bush or a tree that has just sprouted by itself, you probably will find um, a bush or plant nearby, somewhere in the area. That is, the, you know, that it's like. So you'll assume the seed has come from there. Which is a good assumption. But you'll find that things grow that you won't find that nearby. <coughs> Just let it happen and watch what nature does. The brambles are brilliant. I mean, my, my, what the brambles do is quite good. You, and I haven't sort of directed them a bit, but. Yeah, they do make a big dome and then that those structures sort of go brown and they're very lightweight but pretty strong. You know, they're holding the structure. So if you've got the dome under the bramble bush, you're fine under there. It's nice and it's a nice little you could live in it nearly, pretty much. Once it's like established and it's got a few layers on it, you'd be quite well defended from the elements. Yeah. 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 Should build me a little fireplace. Yeah. Fire. That's something that's I've been puzzling about fire. You know, could could Adam and Eve just make fire like that? Could they have laser beams coming out of their eyes and cutting rocks? Stuff like that. Although the arc, I've seen a quite a good video about a lot of these big stones and that they find and how they were cut, and it it does appear to be pretty good evidence that it was very very fast spinning discs that did most of the cutting. But get this, fucking hell, they have seen what they call plasticization, where the rock becomes like plasticine, and then they place it in and shape it or whatever. They had that ability. Whoever made these structures, and this is a fact, had that ability to make rock like plasticine. Because they can see how it's, it's bent. And I don't know what the video is called, shucks. But it's getting quite a lot of views, so it's quite popular. Comes up in the recommended, uh, you know, sort of ancient mysteries stuff. It's good. It's um, you know, so man, and it's you know, obviously they a lot. Most people just think it's aliens. Of course, they, you know, that's what they think. And maybe they're still in the human race, and maybe they're the blue eyes, but no, they're not. It's a different story, and you have to feel the truth. Feel the truth of it. So 
just sticking with what I'm saying. They had powers then. I think Enoch, son of Cain, was known to know lots of things. And I think Enoch, son of Jared, in the line of Seth, me. There's something lately I've felt about, well, you know, I mean, it says it in scripture that I was asked to write down everything. So, but that wasn't what I was going to say. There's also evidence, it seems to be there's evidence that the people who are doing the stuff in Egypt and people doing stuff in South America had a war, a nuclear war. The gay bar, gay bar. I don't mean to entertain. It's just me. It's just me being me. I love like when you say stuff and then you can make a song out of it. I like doing that. So anyway, there's this evidence that they had some sort of war. And I'm saying that these were the people who lived for 900 odd years. years. This was them. That was them. And they probably wiped themselves out. Not completely obviously but they might have wiped out the knowledge the knowledge could have been quite secretive or only known by a few or maybe some knowledge survived with Noah And perhaps Nibiru is back. We had that weird time. We seem to have had a bit of a calm down. They've been uh, they've just now saying about solar flares and earthquakes, you know, maybe things are cooking up again. Or maybe the sun's cooking up again. The sun's had its quiet time in terms of solar flares I don't know. when I was in the pits with the things going wrong with me I, I got to the point where you know fuck it if I die I die you know I went out on a limb I tried fuck it <coughs> but I knew and I said to myself isn't it just nice to know that God is going to save us all? God has everything in hand. Yes. That was fine. That, with that, yeah, come on, bring it on. Whatever needs to be done, be done. Well, as I didn't die, And last weekend, last weekend, I danced like a maniac, but pretty cool, down at Bodfest. And uh, a photographer there took a load of pictures. So I've got some pretty cool pictures of me doing my thing. And I was pleased about that. That's good. So yeah, that's my Facebook picture. If anyone wants to link up on Facebook, Stephen Hartley Jr. Oh, it's my name on Facebook at the moment. So I changed it for a dare and then it makes you wait like nine months or something to change it back. Nine weeks, but I might just keep it. Because, you know, why not?
Well, anyway, you can leave comments as well. How you doing, Dara? <laughs> you're probably probably one who's likely to watch it all. I hope you're well, mate. My advice to you is smoke a fucking joint. Stop being a pussy. Experiment. Think about all those people who experimented with LSD. Timothy Leary and... <laughs> he was quite a happy guy. I'm not recommending doing LSD because I haven't done it myself too much. Did a little bit when I was 16, 17. A bit stupid. Apparently it lasts for seven years. And your brain figures out a way to cope with it. But I recommend natural mushrooms. Or just, you know, good old split. And, um... Yeah. Because I think, I think it's needed. I think it's, uh... If you want to do soul work, that's what I call it. And that's how I feel I use cannabis. It's also, I use it as a pleasure thing. Because we use other pleasure things. You know. You do. When they're there, you do. And there's lots of people in the world who don't have them. But they have other compensations. God is fair. God is fair. All, all that goes around comes around. And, you know. And so the world, the world needs to get to know God. And we won't need governing when that happens. The more that happens, the less governance we'll need, the less governance we'll have. I'll tell you something that has been ticking me off a bit. You know, Brexit and Europe. If we were going into Europe, then why do we still need a massive House of Commons and House of Lords? You know, we just add in more and more layers of governance. So we don't need more governance. We want less governance. We want local governance. We should all be the governors, all citizens. Everybody counts. From the ground up. So, globalization, yes. Devolution, yes. Let's get down to the lowest common denominator. Everybody's got to live somewhere. Everybody has a neighbour. Everybody needs a local shop. We need something to do. We need purpose. We're in a world these days where nearly everything you buy is has a health question over it, you know, if it's not fresh, if it's been overproduced, I mean, oh, rotten stuff goes on, you know, and even if it's fresh and organic, you know, it can still be grown kind of hydroponic with, without even the sun. You know, it's a challenge these days to to get what the body needs. And we live in over sterile environments and we're disconnected from nature. You know, even I hardly barely I don't get muddy enough. But then even saying that actually I'm noticing that and this going off on a tangent and I want to come back that uh Exposed mud is not ideal for nature at all. That's it's like bad. Right. So you see an exposed mud, that's not what nature wants at all. That's like the worst thing. So coming back. 
so the challenge to be to be able to sustain to give your body what it needs and the only resource we have is the earth and we, we're doing the wrong thing with it we're depleting it of phosphate's going to run out Ploughing and stuff, and it all gets washed off into the sea. Gone. That's a challenge. You've got 50 years of tops. Right? No food from the earth anymore. We're not going to be able to... You know, we're going we're gonna to get more diseases when we're not getting the minerals and things that we need. And food and less and less connected so you know we apparently you drink a can of coke and that kills all the bacteria in your mouth throat and gut it can be beneficial if you've got really bad bacteria in your gut which is why people are probably addicted to it they've got a problem for a healthy gut it's not a good thing so yeah so there's the challenge and you know we could do it. I, I I'm gonna have like a thousand brambleberries in my back garden. I've got a tiny garden, a thousand brambleberries. That's just from letting nature do what it wants. You know, and I've got a cherry tree there, which is not mature. But if that was a mature cherry tree, <laughs> I was up in the tree. Right? I made a rope ladder and I bought a hammock so I could make a tree at home. The Garden of Eden is off the floor. Was that pleasant? I think that'll do. And to anyone else who's been commenting on my channel, thanks. Bizarre, something seven seven. You're right, mate. <laughs> Hope you're well. Uh, thanks for some of the females giving me some comments. Appreciate that. So that's it. I love you. 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 And I love myself. I love myself, mate. And I love God. Bye.